Blackmagic just released a massive update to DaVinci Resolve, and today I'm gonna show you three of my favorite features that you can start using immediately. One for edit, one for audio, and one for color. Let's go! Yeah, yeah, Mary, let's go to feature number one. First up, we have the automatic ducking feature. This is handy to adjust your music volume based on the other audio tracks, like your voice. Say you have a moment in your video where it's just an image on screen or some text. DaVinci Resolve automatically turns up the music to fill the silence, then smoothly lowers it back down when you start speaking again. In this video, we're gonna talk about and test 16 different features you get when you sign up for CapCut Pro. You can access this from the edit page. Simply click on your music track and you'll find this as a track-based effect. You can tweak the parameters right there. But to really see what's happening, I'll take you over to the Fairlight page. Now you don't have to switch to this view, but it does give a great visual on what's going on. Here, open the mixer on the right side, and if you don't see the track effects, just click the three dots and select track effects. You should spot the ducker among the options. When you click on the settings, you'll see all the adjustable parameters displayed on dials, with a graph showing both the reference track and the music track. There are five key settings to adjust. Duck amount determines how much the audio dips. Look ahead is the buffer time in milliseconds before the audio begins to duck, anticipating when someone's going to speak. Rise time is how quickly the volume drops to its lowest point. A lower setting means a sharper decrease. And the hold is the delay before the volume begins to rise again after the speech ends. And this rising again is the recovery time. It's the time that it takes for the volume to go to the initial level. Now, I've found that the full settings were a bit too sharp for my taste, so I've opted for longer timings to get smooth, longer transitions, but it's all about what suits your project best. In this video, we're gonna a quick talk tip, the ducker is very sensitive. It can pick up minor noises as significant, which might cause some audio flickering. To avoid this, I recommend you cutting out all of the silent sections in your talking head clips. Now, talking about cutting out the silent portions, we got a new audio transcription and speaker detection features, which allows you to do just that and much more efficiently. We had audio transcription before, but now with speaker detection and timeline-based editing, it's even better. Let me show you this by dropping in a clip of my friend Claudio and me discussing cameras. And I'll have the clip transcribed ensuring the text speakers is selected, which labels who's saying what automatically. And you can rename the speakers as needed and manage your edits right from the timeline. Now here's a neat trick. You can insert another talking head clip without transcribing it first. If you get a warning, simply head to the menu and select Transcribe Missing Audio. This streamlines your editing process, making it easier to find specific parts of your footage. Now regarding silence detection and deleting gaps, I prefer doing it manually on the timeline rather than automating the process, which can be a bit messy. I feel like DaVinci sometimes leaves some silent parts or cuts too sharp the dialogues. So what you can do is adjust the in and out points for each gap, delete, and you're good to go. Lastly, a brand new tool to make things much easier in the color page, the Film Look Creator tool. This is a secret weapon to give your footage that classic cinema film aesthetic. You can play with the settings like contrast, saturation, hue, exposure, and you can dive deeper into film emulation with effects like halation, film gate look, flicker and weave, and much more. Now, while this tool pulls various components from the Resolve Effects library, it simplifies it all into one powerful effect. So you can start with a basic Blackmagic film look, which you can then customize extensively. If you're using Resolve Color Management, it handles everything automatically. But for those who prefer manual control, you can adjust it all on the color space override. Now, there's a ton more features and small improvements in the software that I didn't talk about, like the focus background, new tracking tools, improvements in the edit page, and much more. Let me know in the comment section which one you're more excited about and that I should do a dedicated video on. And since you're here, you can go check out this video that YouTube handpicked for you. So, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Ciao!